Hello and welcome to Calvary Chapel Kamaki. Today is the 19th of May 2020 and we continue our study in the book of Ephesians. Today is part two of a study we started last time. Uh, the title is My Rights versus the Will of God. So today's message will be mainly focused on scripture about the will of God. It's a very large topic so it won't be complete but I think it's it's going to help us along as we all in Christ are trying to now walk in his will and understanding what is his will for our lives but as a reminder the book of Ephesians is about the church the family of God the body of Christ the bride of Christ and so yes we need to know the will of God as individuals but we are individuals made up of a larger body and that's the body of Christ called the church and so when the church knows who God is and is identified by Christ himself so that we know God and that we're known by him uh, in the church it's a powerful thing so now if we're all functioning in the will of God then nothing can stop us not even a lockdown and so yesterday I talked mainly about uh, you know my rights versus the will of God and it was a reminder that we're ambassadors of Christ. This world is no longer our home, that we're just passing through. Um, and as ambassadors, we're representing Christ himself, the King of Kings and his kingdom. And so in many ways, we've given up our rights of this world for a better option. And so now we're citizens of heaven and of our King himself, the Messiah. And so because of that, we have now a different view of everything. So yes, in my flesh and, um, and, and how I operate, I miss things during this lockdown. But the Lord would keep reminding me to look up and focus on Him. So if I'm focused on Him, then I'm not going to lose my first love because He's now my first love. He is the priority of everything that I'm about. And when that's happening and I'm functioning by the moving of the Holy Spirit, then even this lockdown doesn't phase me, uh, especially I don't get into the realm of fear and doubt because I'm trusting Jesus. But let's go ahead and let me read some, some points that we're going to see in Ephesians as we go. But there's things that the Lord has done for us so that we, we will be connected with Him. As we know Him, this growing knowledge of God Himself, and as we're known by him, as we're walking by faith, trusting Jesus. So we've already talked about in Ephesians 1, 3, he has blessed us in the heavenlies. He has chosen us, Ephesians 1, 4. He has predestined us, Ephesians 1, 5 and 1, 11. He has made us accepted, Ephesians 1, 6. He has redeemed us, 1, 7. He has abounded toward us, Ephesians 1.8. He has made known unto us some things in Ephesians 1.9. He has given us an inheritance, Ephesians 1.11 and 1.14. And finally, he has sealed us by his Holy Spirit in Ephesians 1.13. When we get to those points, we'll explain what those mean. But the Lord has done amazing things that we're going to see even in chapter 1. And what I'm connecting is that the Lord has revealed himself to us, and he still wants to do that. And as he's doing that, he wants us to know that we can be safely identified in him alone, Christ alone. Uh, that's all we need. Our salvation, our deliverance, um, all these blessings are from Christ. It's his free gift in, the, in grace that he gives us. And as we apply that to us now, and we become more focused on God himself and how he has loved us perfectly. And now because of that, now we focus on others. We're esteeming others more highly than ourselves. See, we have a whole new focus. Our life is radically changed. And that's only by the working of the Holy Spirit. So we have all of that. So, so when we go through Ephesians, we will be learning about how we're identified in Christ. We will learn what the church is and is to be doing uh, and how important those things are. Uh, and so uh, there's so much in this little bitty book. I'm so excited to learn 
as we go through it together. But I have a large list now of scripture that speaks of the will of God. So I'm just going to go through them and I'm going to send the notes uh, to you all that's uh, listening uh, through WhatsApp and through email. I apologize for the folks that listen through Facebook. You won't get the notes, but if you want to reach out to me, we would be glad to email them to you. So let me start reading. The first one is in Mark 3.35. Jesus says, For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. That's the passage where there was a large crowd and Jesus' mother Mary and his brothers and sisters show up. They're asking for him. And he makes the point, you know, my true uh, close relatives are the ones who do, do the will of God. And so that's important. In Luke 7.30, it says, But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by John the Baptist. So we, we see that the religious leaders, they didn't um, believe what John the Baptist was saying about the, the coming Messiah. He was saying, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Uh, but they refused to listen to that and be baptized. So what did they do? It says that they rejected the will of God. In Acts 3.36, it says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, meaning died, was buried with his fathers and saw corruption. That's a passage connecting um, David being the root and the branch uh, of the Messiah. Uh, but David died and his body decayed. But Jesus, not so. When Jesus died and was buried for three days, his body didn't see corruption. He rose from the dead, defeated death for us. In Romans 1.10, it says, Making request if by some means, now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. We see Paul's heart uh, wanting to see the, the brothers and sisters in Rome. And he writes to them and he, he's saying that I may find in the will of God to come to you. Uh, you know, I can relate to that now and maybe you can too in this lockdown. I'm praying, uh, Lord, if it's your will that we can meet again as Calvary Chapel Kamaki on that corner in that building, that we can be uh, the church body gathered together freely. You know, I miss those days. In Romans 8.27, it says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We see that God himself intercedes for us through the Holy Spirit. You know, we even see scripture that says sometimes we don't even know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit will come and intercede and even plead on our behalf. But we see it's connected with the will of God, which... I'm always reminded that the most powerful prayers that we can pray to God himself is the ones that, that connect with his will. Lord, your will be done. In other words, Lord, open my eyes to what your will is in this situation, whatever you're praying about. We can, I can even say right now, Lord, in this lockdown, what is your will? What are you trying to say? What are you doing Lord, would you open our eyes to see those things, that we would just be in prayer agreeing with you, and that we would say yes and amen to everything that you're doing right now. So yeah, it's not so fun being locked away in a house, you know, especially where we live. Uh, the, God's creation here is so beautiful. You know, I, I miss just being outside, being in the ocean, being in the mountains, all those things. Um, but we can pray, Lord, what are you doing? What is your will uh, that's happening now? Lord, open our eyes, open my heart to see that and just to agree with you. And Lord, help us not to be in fear and doubt because that's not of you. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and that we're so radically surrendered to the working of the Spirit that we're now actually being transformed by the renewing of our mind, what is happening when we allow that? We are actually allowing now proof that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
So when people around us, we see, uh, they see uh, the Lord working in us, maybe they just see that, wow, that's different. Um, you know, that person is handling things way different than I would. Uh, and as they get to know us and we're talking about Jesus and just living it out, even with our actions, maybe even more so than our words sometimes, but that's actually proof of the perfect will of God, which brings up, and I've talked about this before, but there's a perfect will of God and there's a permissive will of God. You know, I can connect that with in our life following Christ, we're praying for the perfect will of God as we do that. In fact, I even pray uh, like this, that Lord, not just your will be done in my life, but would you keep me in the center of your perfect will for you? Lord, I want to be in that center. I don't want to be in it on any edge, any gray area. And a permissive will. I, you know, I've been thinking about uh, how Moses confronted Pharaoh. And where it says that Pharaoh had a hardened heart. And then it finally says that God hardened his heart. That's God's permissive will. See, he's not the author of evil. But Pharaoh had a hardened heart. And he was bent on going his own way. So the Lord has a permissive will in that sense that he allowed that. But, you know, that wasn't a waste at all because the Lord used that for his glory. He used even Pharaoh for the glory of God himself. In Romans 15, 32, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. That connects with one we've already read, you know, Paul's heart to see the, the people in Rome. And, and so, but we see that I may come to you with the joy by the will of God. In 1 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. So just like in Ephesians. In 2 Corinthians 1.1, 1, 1, very similar. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. So on and so forth. In 2 Corinthians 8.5, it says, And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. The will of God, it's a big topic. And, and we, we're trying to figure what that is. And so we've already gone through all of Ephesians. Uh, there's maybe six verses that we talked about the will of God. In Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, very similar. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. In Colossians 4.12, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So that can be in our prayers for others. As I'm praying for you, many times I'm praying, Lord, um, would they just l surrender to your will for them in their lives, Lord, that by the working of your spirit, they would just say yes to you. And, and so it says uh, that this man, Epaphras, was praying for the people in uh, Colossae, always laboring fervently in his prayers that you may stand perfect or complete. It says perfect and complete, but mature, strong in the Lord, in all the will of God. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, it says, for this is the will of God. So here's one that's right in our face. What's, what's the will of God? Well, here's a verse that says it. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. You know, that's your refinement. That's this being set apart and growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All those things that uh, your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality. So what's the will of God? We know two things from that verse. Our sanctification being set apart. You know, the Lord chose us. Um, he picked us um, in his foreknowledge and he the predestination, if you will. We'll be talking about those topics but he chose us to be sanctified and that we should abstain from sexual immorality. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. There's another one. What is the will of God? That we would be in everything give thanks. You know, I'll just pick on myself for now. But in this lockdown, you know, it would be easy for me to just uh, be whining about stuff and uh, be down, uh, even let depression start doing that work, all from Satan himself, uh, that fear would come in and, and doubt, you know, Lord, do you really love me, all these things? 
especially if I'm not in the Word. See, my faith starts to dwindle and fade. But, but how do I get my faith back up to where it should be? It's in the Word. See, it's by hearing the Word uh, that my faith grows in Romans chapter 10. But it says, in everything give thanks. So, Lord, you're saying that it's your will that I should give thanks in everything. Lord, I should be thankful that you are who you are, even in this lockdown. You know, and Paul, being a prisoner, writing to the Ephesians in chains, he, he was all about that. Uh, but, you know, that wasn't him in the flesh. That's the spirit in him. And that's also the same spirit that can work in us that we can see everything in a different light. Now, we're still human. We're still in this flesh. So that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Uh, and we're going to complain sometimes. And, and uh, you know, you're not seeing it on these videos. But my wife, she puts up with my complaining occasionally. Man, it sure would be a nice day to be out in the kayak type stuff. And that's, that's true. Uh, I love to just uh, get out in creation. Let's go for a hike. And, you know, I can't do that. But it's the Lord's will that we give thanks in everything. That's got to be a work of the Spirit. That's a miracle for that to happen. In 2 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, it says again, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. We hear that in his letters. How about in Hebrews 10.36, uh, it says, For you have need of endurance, so, af so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. The promise of what? Of his return, of his complete salvation. So we're saved by the blood of Christ at his cross. And so we're saved from the penalty of sin. We're being saved right now as we're walking practically in this life from the power of sin. And then when the Lord returns for his church, we will be saved completely from sin because it won't even be present any longer. And so that's that promise. But it says in Hebrews that we, need, we have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. 1 Peter 2.15, for this is the will of God. This is right in our face again. That by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In 1 Peter 3.17, chapter 3 of 1 Peter is all about suffering, especially for the Christian. And why do we suffer? So if, if you have questions about that, 1 Peter th uh, chapter 3 is a good place to start. It says, For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So we see there that even suffering sometimes is by the will of God. But, you know, it's always from his heart of love towards us so that we can be stronger in him. But we see that in 1 Peter 3.17. In 1 Peter 4.2 it says, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. You know, that's always a choice and a decision that we Christians need to continually make. Are we going to continue with God even through suffering or hard times? And we build up this endurance, waiting for the promise of his return. Um, but it's almost like a choice there. Let me read that verse again that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men. See, that's our old person. Our old person, that was all about us. It was for our flesh and the lust of ourself, the things that we wanted, that we desired. But we should no longer do that, but, we, but for the will of God should be our life. In 1 Peter 4.19, it says, Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. So God is a faithful creator, yes? And he's faithful to the point where we can trust him. That's affirmative. That's without a doubt. So because of that, even if we're suffering, we can now live according to the will of God and we can commit our life to him regardless. And then I read this yesterday, but finally 1 John 2, 17, it says, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So the will of God, we're, we're already coming up 20 minutes, so this is one of the longer messages. So I'm just scratching the surface. I realize 
But I want to encourage you, get into the Word. Use these scriptures as a launching pad. Be in prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to, Lord, what is your will for me? Now, there's some verses I read that there's no um, question what the will of God is. But, you know, in God, there's flexibility in the sense that he works with individuals. And so the will of God for you specifically could look different for his will for me in any given situation or at a set time. But we can trust him through that. So the will of God, uh, you know, when we put our trust in Jesus, we know a lot of things. We know that he is immutable. He doesn't change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we can trust him. And so that's my encouragement for you today. So as you're seeking the will of God, do that um, through scripture. Do that through prayer. Do that by allowing the Holy Spirit just to speak to your heart. And I promise you, as you're, you're crying out to the Lord for help and if you need understanding and wisdom from the scripture, the Lord is going to show himself. He'll, he will reveal himself. And just as a reminder, let scripture interpret scripture. So that's why we go through all these scriptures. So today's topic was the will of God. We had a little sampling of what scripture says about that. But that's all it is, a sampling. But study for yourself. Um, rightly divide the word of truth. And the Lord will bless that. And he will bless you uh, even in the hardest times. So we'll make this uh, the close of today's message. I hope it was a blessing to you. And until next time, God bless.